What's up, guys? Welcome you all to my channel TechnoCube, and I'm going to start with this pending series of mobile computing. Uh, we already had seen mobile IP and its uh, different, uh, you know, mechanism and working. Uh, the next thing that we want to discuss is mobile transport layer. So I'm going to start with that pending series, which I have not covered up uh, the full session. So I'm going to start the the sessions which are pending okay uh, so we are discussing here about mobile transport layer so this is this whole chapter deals with mobile transport layer um, and uh, this channel and this session but basically this uh, this whole playlist is all about uh, mobile computing so if you are a theoretical person if you are in academic or in masters or in bachelors you can have a notes on it and you can write uh, you know a very simplistic way uh, for your exam you can take the notes from here okay so we are discussing here mobile transport layer and the first point there are actually difference in uh, transport layer generally we are dealing here with, here with tcp okay so this is the main protocol that uh, we are uh, discussing and there are two types of tcp there is a traditional tcp and there is a and there's an optimized tcp you know because of some problem in traditional tcp they had developed something called as optimized tcp this a traditional tcp also known as standard tcp which is owned by the current internet uh, people are uh, using this tcp from very long um, so this is a traditional tcp so let's understand what is the, what are some of the problem here you see uh, so there is a traditional TCP and the all topics that I'm currently discussing is based on traditional TCP. Yeah. So in traditional TCP, uh, the problem generally happens uh, with TCP is uh, something called as congestion. This is the main problem of TCP. And currently it is also dealing with that, uh, you know, there are so many research and uh, optimization is happening on this congestion topic. So we need to first take this congestion control. Okay, let's take this so the transport layer which has been you know established or developed it is designed specifically for a fixed network okay fixed network and fixed system so here the first point is the transport layer transport layer is designed for fixed network fixed network or fixed system so when a data transmission happens using any kind of cable or adapters or optical cables or some hardware or routing and if some packet gets dropped there you know always the tcp assumes uh, that it, this is a problem due to some overloaded system and just assume that is it is from congestion okay it is just from congestion so uh, data transmission Data transmission happens or is occurred uh, using uh, cables. Cables. If a packet lost here, somehow, if a packet lost or if a packet is dropped or lost, or let's say here it is dropped while moving from a sender to receiver. Okay. So, transport layer assumes that it is not because of some hardware or software, it just assumes that it is because of the overloaded system which is congestion. Okay. So, transport layer or you can say TCP never never say, sorry this is not, never say it, the drop is because drop is, uh, I'm so sorry, I have a problem with the D and B actually. Uh, this is because of nonsense code and I have in my brain. So TCP never say drop is because of some hardware or software error. But it simply assumes, but it simply assumes congestion in our case. Simply assumes it. It is because of the congestion. Now, if there is a congestion in the in the layer or in the in the in the transmission, then we need to control it somehow, right? We need to understand what exactly the congestion mean here, or 
what exactly you know congestion is so let's understand uh, what do you mean by congestion in a different uh, notepad here so see here we understand congestion uh, let me open paint here what generally happens in congestion you see there is a router this is a router and basically the router has a buffer this router has a space there is a buffering space in which the packet is coming so if a packet is coming like it is on the route here it is going to be buffer here so this is a buffer this is our router and this is our packet it's coming it's not only one packet there are series of packet coming the work of a router is to transmit or forward the packet forward the but it will not directly forward the packet to the receiver end it will not direct the packet to the receiver end it will not do that but it will try to buffer it first of all okay it will buffer in the space in in, in in this space and then it will try to forward it so let me take the green color here and then it will try to forward the uh, in this channel or whatever the medium you are having so after buffering it will now what will happen if this buffer gets completely packed or you can say it's filled so the buffer space is filled the situation is the case is buffer space is full now what if buffer space full the incoming packets here the incoming packets here somehow cannot be buffered and cannot be forward to the another end okay it is it is somehow not possible so in this case what this router gonna do it will drop it it simply drop the packet it will simply drop this packet and it will start from one then two then three and in this way okay it will just try to uh, drop the packet and whenever a packet gets dropped tcp assumes that it is because of congestion this is the problem okay. and why this is happening why the there is a uh, why this buffer space gets full it's simple to understand why it is full is because you know the channel speed the the outgoing link this outgoing link it's a very speedy speedy in nature let's say uh, but the uh, maybe maybe something like this it's not in speedy in nature but let's say it's it's a very slow it's very slow here it's a very slow uh, channel it's a low speed but you are incoming it means the sender who is here sender speed is very high he is sending at its full rate but the problem is when the packet gets forwarded to this uh, low speed channel uh, you know the speed is very low so he cannot forward like in a manner the way the client is forwarding it's not in the capacity of the router so he cannot forward the speed in which the incoming packets are coming so, okay so this is low speed here but the incoming is high so the packet will come drastically will come it will come and come and on ongoing it's coming and coming and coming but the outgoing is very low in rate okay it's low in rate so what will happen it just buffered here the incoming packet is going to buffer and buffer and buffer and buffer always going to be buffer there and at a time the packet is slowly moving to the outgoing channel so what will happen your buffer is going to be full ult uh, ultimately right eventually it, will, it is going to be full and when this buffer gets full the other packets which are coming to the router going to be dropped by the router this is the problem and this is assumed that is because of the congestion I hope you are getting it now somehow if you are not getting it still let me explain you in a, in a very simplistic manner so there is a router here again and this is the outgoing channel this is a outgoing channel it's a low it's low speed why this is low speed because there are different factors like interference noise and you know distortions and many other things and this is our user here this is the user who is sending the packets in a range packets are coming this router has a buffer space this is our router okay. and what will happen the this is low so he this router uh, will uh, take the packets from the buffer take the packets from the buffer and then it will forward it to the outgoing uh, outgoing channel but it's it's a low rate right it's a low rate here 
because packets are not going it's not they are not forwarding like in a like in a speed like this user is having this is a high speed so he will send okay he will send its full rate but router cannot forward in its full rate okay so ultimately the buffer space packets are going to be buffered more and more here it's going to be stored so ultimately this buffers this buffer space is going to be completely completely i mean full so when this buffer gets full the other packets who are in the route here they are going to be dropped simply dropped by the router so this is a drop packet and the reason simply uh, tcp says is this because of congestion so this is congestion right i hope uh, you understand now somehow so let me put uh, that whole thing in the in the written format so we are dealing with the congestion control so what exactly is congestion control we had seen i think uh, you get the point here so congestion control the router has a packet buffer of filling incoming connections or incoming packet filling in coming uh, packet now the router cannot forward the packet fast enough because you can also relate this whole thing as a flow control because the sum of input rate of packet is higher see there is a high speed so higher than the capacity of out capacity of output link okay this is the thing that happens with the congestion control so in such situation so what happens in this situation so basically if this is the rate problem here so in this situation uh, in this situation in this situation usually router usually drop the packet this is the thing so whenever a drop is happened is a loss for the transmission and receiver uh, will understand that there is a packet loss here so what will happen so a drop packet ultimately drop packet is lost for transmission is lost for transmission and receiver notices a gap here notices a gap the packet stream the packet stream. so how receiver uh, will find that there is a gap well it's a simple thing it's, it's there in the trans uh, in the transport layer if you uh, will see um, so how can i can i find this gap i'll tell you just uh, give me a second now let me put the another point here it's a d point and it says a receiver will so when receiver finds a gap in the packet stream it will not directly tell the sender there is a gap okay but continue to acknowledge all the packet so working of transport layer i hope you on, i know i i hope you know so whenever a packet gets uh, sended from sender to receiver the receiver will acknowledge the packet right it will it is the work of the receiver so receiver will never tell receiver will not never tell the sender about the packet loss or the packet loss 
but eventually sender will eventually get to know that there is a packet loss but so in that case but continue with all the but continue to acknowledge all packets in sequence so receiver will continue to acknowledge all the packets and eventually you know eventually this sender will uh, get to know that there is a problem with some packet okay so a sender eventually eventually notices what it notices it knows notices missing acknowledgement by this he will get to know that there is a problem and then he will get to know Uh, missing uh, sorry get to know about drop packet so so how this is working i still do not get it so it's a simple thing see if i'm sending from the sender if i'm sending one two three and four let's say this has been sent it okay so this is one two three and four this is by the sender and let's say now i'll there is a receiver now what when one this has been send it right at the receiver and receiver get the one so receiver will acknowledge this thing to the sender so this is the ack the same manner when two has been send it to the receiver here two gets received so two gets acknowledgement to acknowledge to the sender this is the thing 